Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology and uh, Carleton University Department of Geography and uh, Environmental Studies. So what I tried to do uh, was draw a crude um, map of the Earth um, in this type of projection. I was going to uh, I was going to start with a, a blank um, slate and do it from scratch, but it looked nothing like this and it would have taken the entire video to draw it. So here's an exercise for you. You know, shut your eyes, go to a blank sheet of paper, open your eyes and draw this projection of the earth. You know, keep practicing until you get good at it. And once you've done that, I will show you how to draw the ocean currents um, around the planet. So I'm going to talk about ocean circulation patterns in this video. Last video I talked about atmospheric circulation patterns. This one is ocean. We know about the, uh, first of all, things get deflected to the right in the northern hemisphere, to the left in the southern hemisphere by the Coriolis force because the Earth is rotating this way, remember? Okay, sun rises in the east, sets in the west. Earth has to be rotating this way if you wrap this into a sphere. So let's have some current coming up from here. So, so we know what this is in North America. This is the uh, Gulf Stream. So it's very warm, very salty water. So it comes up here vast amounts of it and it goes across to um, Europe and it does deflect to the right because we're in the northern hemisphere. So it's on the surface as it goes north, any water moving north is moving from a hotter area to a colder area so the temperature drops. We're talking about the surface water. So this water goes up here and it uh, arcs around and it starts to cool. Okay, so it's still pretty warm. It's bringing heat up into the Arctic, and I'll talk about that a bit more. And then it cools down, and it descends to the ocean floor. Okay, so it, de it de descends down to the ocean floor, and it kind of it spreads out and expands in this region, and then converges here, but it's coming this way. Okay, so this is very cold, very salty, very dense water, and it comes down here. Okay, now it's in the southern hemisphere, so it deflects to the left. Okay, so it deflects to the left and it comes along here, along Antarctica. And it comes all the way up here. And then it deflects up to the left because it's in the southern hemisphere. So it deflects up here. It comes off, this is a, uh, this, it comes up here and it comes, it, it breaks the surface and it becomes very warm, salty water. And so this is the uh, Gulf Stream here, right? And off Japan, it's called the Kuroshio Current. So it does a loop around here and comes back through this channel here. Comes back all the way down here. And then it joins up here with the Gulf Stream on the surface. Okay, so we get this water circulation loop. Okay, so I'll write, it's warm here. It's warm, warm, less warm. You know, it's, it's cold here. It's cold enough and salty enough that it descends to the ocean floor here. So this is all cold water coming down. Right, it's still at the ocean floor, so it stays cold and it comes all the way around this way. They look like arrows, I don't want them to look like arrows. Okay, so it comes, so I'll put the arrows here. Okay, so the deep water then starts to rise here. Okay, there's a loop that breaks off here. From this, um, there's a loop that breaks off here and goes up into the Indian Ocean and circulates back down and joins this. Okay, so this deep water, it surfaces, 
It's warm and salty, comes off here in the Indian Ocean and circulates back down, joining this. Also, there is a chunk here that splits off and it goes through the Drake Passage between the, the southern tip of South America and Antarctica and it joins the cold water here. Okay, so this is called the THC, if you like. T is thermo, heat, haline, haline is salt, and circulation. Okay, so it's the, the it's driven basically by the temperature of the water, right? Cold water is heavier then hot water, remember hot air rises, hot water floats on top of cold water. That's because the molecules in the hot water are moving much faster. It pushes them apart, they occupy less space, so they're lighter. Cold water, the molecules are moving much slower. Remember temperature is an average measure of the, it's the average uh, motion or kinetic energy of the molecules. Cold water, they're moving slower. The water is more compressed, more dense. That's the thermo part hot and cold, changing density of the water, rho if you like, the density of the water, haline is salty, okay? Fresh water is, I'll write it in Africa, fresh water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, okay? Um, if you're in chemistry, you'll know it is one gram per milliliter, or a mill, that's one gram per cubic centimeter. A milliliter is a cubic centimeter. So when you go to the unit, a thousand kilograms, a thousand grams in a kilogram, that gives you 10 to the six in the numerator. Centimeters, 100 centimeters in a meter, that gives you 10 to the six in the, the denominator. So that you can do the conversion. Okay, so this is fresh water. The normal salinity of the ocean, the average salinity of the ocean is 35 PSU, which is, that's, that's uh, also equivalent to practical salinity units, is equivalent to parts per, um, parts per thousand. Okay, so if we're going parts per hundred, we need to move the decimal point, 3.5 percent if you like. So 3.5 percent is the salt content of the typical salinity of the ocean. Okay, so this makes the water heavier because you're replacing water molecules with salt, dissolved salt, which is heavier, right? Salt's heavier than water. So that gives you a number of about 10, 35, kilograms per square meet, per cubic uh, meter rather. Okay, 1035 for salt water. I think that's right. Close anyway. Check it for me please. <laughs> Don't believe anything I say, just check it all. Okay, um, now when ice freezes, okay, then there's salt trapped in and the salinity um, not all of the salt gets captured. About 15 PSU gets captured in the sea ice, first year sea ice. So that's about 1.5%. Salt water is heavier, so it collects into brine pockets. It works its way through the ice and goes out of the ice. So the ice, um, uh, basically, uh, so pure ice is about 917 or something kilograms per cubic meter. So this would be multi-year ice after the salt has been rejected. So if you divide these numbers here by the ice over the water, um, it gives you point 0 0.0895, which means that 10.5% roughly of the ice is above water when you have the pure ice floating in ocean water. Of course, in a lake, um, the percentage of ice above the surface will be lower because the density of the water is lower, so it's not quite as buoyant. Okay, so, a couple key points to remember is that from this, you've probably heard of the ocean gyres. 
where stuff collects on the surface inside the gyre. Okay, so what this particular, these lines of water movement are, are they're both at the surface and they're just, they're at the ocean floor, right? We're at the surface here, we break here, then we descend to the ocean floor, we stay at the ocean floor, we come across here, we break here, so this is hotter water here at the surface, right? This is hotter water here at the surface, the cold water comes up here, some break somewhere here, it's warm when it gets to Japan, so this is warm water at the surface, right? Coming back here, okay? So, so this is the type of pattern, and this is the deep water here, okay? So, Let's, um, let's look at just the surface water now. Okay, I don't have another color to use. So, what I'll, so we get these gyres set up. So just knowing that water, uh, the movement is a deflection to the right in the northern hemisphere, this curving jet gulf stream that comes across, by the way, this brings tremendous amounts of heat to England and to Western Europe. So if this, was to slow down or move to a lower latitude or shut off and just do a loop down here, then that would cause you know very significant decrease in temperature in uh, Western Europe, but that would be a temporarily local thing happening. So the water curves to the right here and it comes down here. This is a crude equator here, the, da the dashed line. Okay, so we move to the right, we move to the right, we move to the right, and we come back here. Okay, so we have this circle here, this gyre. Okay, so this is one gyre one, if you like. Okay, well, what happens here? Well, the water's going to be coming this way, but we're in the southern hemisphere. So it turns to the left, right? It deflects down to the left. Okay, so we get a gyre here. Okay, so this is gyre two. Okay, over here it's pretty clear uh, to see that, uh, well over here, okay, um, this is deflecting to the right here. This is part of a gyre. Remember the water's coming up and breaking the surface here and coming up here. So this whole maneuver here, coming this way, is gyre three, right? Deflection to the right in the northern hemisphere. And then over here, we get this movement, deflection to the left in the southern hemisphere. So this is gyre three, gyre four. What, where's the fifth gyre? Any guesses? Up here, ice is there, doesn't really, I mean the thing rotates, but right over here. Deflects to the right. Right, so we get gyre five. Okay, now when you have a gyre like this, remember that, that if there's junk and plastics and stuff, as it goes to the right, the plastic is pushed towards the center. So we have these five garbage patches of stuff here where it collects uh, plastic debris. Okay, um, what's going on in the Arctic? Well, a couple points. Coral reefs are all dying here. So if this water somehow, as the water currents slow down, they won't curve as much. Okay, so you get the warm water here. It doesn't curve as much. Breaks the curve and comes down, hits Australia. Okay, we get, last year we had, during a strong El Nino, we lost, uh, we had huge amounts of the reef um, bleached. Two thirds of it died. This year, it's this part here lower down. So we're, we've had two thirds of the entire Great Barrier Reef affected. We've got the third one, the lower area is not affected. Okay, so this is a huge problem. But what's happening up in the Arctic is the, the, when the ice melts, you get fresh water, okay? It forms a cap. Fresh water, cold fresh water after ice melt is lighter than the, than the warmer saline, sal, high salinity water. But that high salinity water is breaking up underneath and melting the ice. So I think I've covered enough information here to let you think about, so thank you.